Hello, this is a video for statics. This video is all about the product of inertia. And as you can see here, we're gonna be introducing this topic with a square. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and pop on a coordinate system. So we're gonna do X and Y like that. Um, and then the first example, the first method, I'll just call this method one. I'm going to take the entire square as my area. So I know that the product of inertia I, X, Y, I want to figure out my areas, whether those are differential or whether they are discrete. Multiply each area times an X coordinate and a Y coordinate. And I want to sum that up or integrate it over the total area of the cross section or the area of the square itself. All right, so for method one, I'm going to choose um, to use the whole square. So I'll just have a single area. I'll label that area number one. And so my product of inertia, I, X, Y, um, I'm going to go ahead and just do this symbolically. So I'm going to give this, let me think this through for a second. I'm going to call this L. I'm going to call this L so that my square has a length of 2L per side. Um, the reason why I'm doing that is just kind of thinking ahead to what I'm going to do in method two. That'll make sense in just a minute here. All right, so the total area of my square. Um, I have 2L quantity squared, but I look at the centroid of that square. It does lie on the overall centroid of the cross section. So my X and Y coordinates, they're both going to be zero. And so I can conclude that my product of inertia IXY is going to be equal to zero. All right, let's go ahead and do this um, breaking that area down. So now I'm going to have not just square number one, but also square number two. So I'm going to break this up here. Square number three and square number four. We'll call this method two. Okay. And um, we just want to sum those up. So I, X, Y is going to be equal to x1, y1, a1 plus x2, y2, a2 plus x3, y3, a3 plus x4, y4, a4. Okay, let's start plugging through this. Um, so the first term, I'm gonna put a little dot at the centroid of square number one. Um, so that area is L by L, so I'll put an L squared term there. My X term, so I want to go from the origin in that direction. So I want to go L over 2 positive, and then I want to go L over 2 positive in the Y direction to get to that center. So L over 2, L over 2. That's my X1 and my Y1 term. Okay, let's go on to shape number two. I'm going to add this up. Area two, of course, another little squared. So I've got L squared for my area. And this is where you have to start watching your signs, right? So in the X direction, I want to go negative. In the Y direction, I want to go positive. So I'm going to go minus L over two for X2, and I'm going to go positive L over two for Y2. All right, next term, let's go to square number three, put a little dot at the center of that. Of course, my area is the same L squared. My X term and my Y term are gonna be negative here. So I'll do a minus L over two and another minus L over two. And finally, my last term, area four course has the same area L squared. To get there, I want to go positive L over 2 in the x direction and minus L over 2 in the y direction. So L over 2 and minus L over 2. And once we sum all this up, so I've got L, um, not cubed, but L to the fourth over 4, 
Here I have minus L to the fourth over four plus L to the fourth over four minus L to the fourth over four. And we see that this product of inertia is also equal to zero. Um, so the rule of thumb, if you can find a line of symmetry, you kind of know that your product of inertia is gonna be zero and you can skip some of the trouble of working this out, but just kind of proved it to you using two different ways to compute the product of inertia for a square. Uh, thanks for watching, I hope this was helpful.